Hello, my darlings. It's Tango and Sue here with you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, new viewers. I don't say that lightly because um, we got 4,000 new people following this page yesterday. Yes, I will explain. If y'all have not seen the craziness that is happening on this page, oh my God, you're going to want to jump in because the tea has been spilled. It's spilled all over this page. Hello, you guys. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome, replay viewers. I know they're going to be a bunch of you. Uh, welcome, YouTube viewers. Welcome, anybody else who you share this with. And I hope you do. Hello, I see you guys jumping on. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so I have not gone live here in a while, but I had to do this. I had to go live because there's so many of you who have joined me in the last 48 hours. And there's so many questions. And there's so many presumptions. Um, not with you guys. I'm preaching to the choir. Because uh, you guys have decided to join me and follow me and find out what's next and what's going on up here um, instead of just telling me I do not know what the I am doing. I do know what I'm doing. Sometimes I'm doing it because I'm deliberately messing up. Sometimes I'm not. But y'all, I'm going out of town for a week to see my mom. And I cannot leave you guys like this. I cannot leave you hanging. So this is your reward for those of you who saw that viral video, who instead of paint shaming me, jumped on and said, I'm going to follow this girl and see what's next. This is for you. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Hello, Linda. Hey, Jessica. Hey, Sophia. Robin. Oh my gosh. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, um, I posted a video on TikTok, sorry, bugs, um, uh, uh, a week or so ago, and then uh, on Facebook, and y'all, it's freaking blown up bigger than anything. I was like, I had a million views on TikTok, and I'm like, oh my God. And then I, I think we're about to surpass that here on Facebook. So lots of opinions, um, definitely some, uh, she's a witch, uh, vibes. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up, um, Google it. It's funniest thing ever on the internet, but I'm getting a lot of those vibes, getting a lot of those vibes. So let's talk about it. What I did was I poured paint right onto the sofa. Now, those of you who've been with me a while, you know that I have painted many a chair, many an upholstery, many a sofa. I painted leather, I painted pleather, painted chenille, I painted tweed. I mean, y'all remind me, what haven't I painted? Um, oh, you did find me yesterday. Oh, welcome, my darling. I'm so glad you're here. I really, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna have fun. My 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 little finger is, is a little bit broken from blocking so many people, but we don't need negative energy. We're here to have fun. We're having a good time. So basically, um, I have figured out a few things and I am trying something new and I wanted to do a little demo today and just be here to answer any questions you may have about what's going on. Uh, so let me think of where to begin. Um, for those of you who don't like talking, just come back later and scroll forward and you can see everything and get the questions answered. But I do have to preface this a little bit because a lot of you um, are have uh, the comments have conflated different styles of painting furniture, painting upholstery. And I first want to say um, there's really no right way or no wrong way if it works for you. If it works for me, if it works for you, everybody has their own way. There's no paint shaming going on. I have some suggestions on ways that I think it's going to work better in certain applications and I definitely have paint that I prefer to use in these applications and there's reasons why. So I'm going to give you some of those answers to some of the questions that were asked online but then definitely throw your questions at me. I'm here for you. Um, if you are painting a, a flat fabric like a cotton or something that does not absorb um, you you have a few I mean they all absorb I'm sorry but just doesn't have a pattern isn't a raise isn't twill or chenille right it doesn't have a, a, a sponginess to it I don't know how to describe it um, there it reacts differently okay so if you're doing that kind of fabric you you can do any myriad of techniques on it you can paint it you can dye it with paint by diluting the paint absolutely okay you can use dyes okay i will explain later why i don't uh and why i haven't but it doesn't mean i won't ever but it just doesn't work for me as well you can also as suggested many times over water down the paint use it as a dye now let me tell you what kind of paint i like i use miss lillian's hey there oh thank you sweetie goodwill it's all goodwill it's all it's all thrift town 
I think it was new though. Um, it'll be covered in paint soon enough. All right, um, this color's Chloe Moon. Oh, the color that I actually used that got covered over um, is uh, Smooth Jazz. I'm gonna answer that question, Smooth Jazz. Why do I use Miss Lillian's instead of the other paints that I um, have used in the past, such as Debbie's Design Diary, Chalk and Clay Base Paint, or Daydream Apothecary, um, or Dixie Belle? Um, I prefer, when I'm working on fabric, to use Miss Lillian's because it has a built-in top coat, and it has a little bit more, for lack of a better term, bendiness to it, in my experience. Closer to what you will experience with a latex paint, okay? Y'all know when latex dries, it's kind of gooey. That's why we don't like to use it on furniture because we don't want gooey paint that never hardens on our furniture, okay? But chalk paint, this is chalk, C-H-O-C-K, um, has kind of, it's kind of in the middle and has both of those qualities. So it's a little bit bendy, but it'll dry well on our furniture and adhere. Um, Ray's Paisley pattern, it's a charcoal brown. Sorry, I'm trying to read your comment. Try to keep the questions short so I don't have to dig down too far. Looking for tips, awesome, okay, I'm here for you. So if you're doing something like that, um, I would say water your paint down, three to one, lots of coats, sand in between layers, use a paint with a top coat, that's what I was getting to, okay? Miss Lillian's has a built-in top coat. If you use Debbie's Design Diary, I'm not saying you can't, it's a clay-based paint, it requires a top coat, it, it will reactivate. Um, I know you've seen people use it. So how do they keep it from reactivating? Time, right? After a year or so, it's gonna be cured. I think Debbie said six months, I don't have six months. Or you can put a top coat on it, which will make it crunchy. We don't want crunchy, okay? So that's number one. Uh, with the Paisley pattern, something like that, if you want the Paisley pattern to kind of show, that's a perfect way to do it. So I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing on this couch, and then I'm gonna tell you what I learned doing this couch that you can use back on that first thing. But try not to confuse everybody. Um, suffice it to say, I will be posting all the reels and shorts of this whole process. And at the end, if you're new here, you will learn that I take all the reels, all the information, all the do's and don'ts, everything that I learned, all the supplies, and I put them in a blog. They're all on my blog at tangoodworks.com. So at the end of every project, you can go back in and see. And I, I gotta suggest doing that. Because sometimes I learn things along the way, you guys. Sometimes I, I change course in the middle. People are like, you, you should be ashamed of yourself. People are just gonna pick up a paintbrush and start painting. I'm like, that's on them. <laughs> I'm experimenting. So, hi, I'm Tangled Sue. I screw shit up so you don't have to. But you know what? I don't often, it doesn't, it almost always works out. I was like, it's not often a failure because I do recognize when something's not working. I do a lot of tests and I, I course correct. That's what you have to do, kiddos. You have to course correct. And I thank you guys for that because one of you had a really great uh, suggestion and I took it and I learned from it. I learned from it. So this couch behind me, all right, it's a different color. I know if you've only seen the first couple reels that I did, you're going to be like, what color is that? It's the original color that I wanted, plus a couple more. So we're jumping ahead. Shh, don't tell anybody. Because you followed me, you get to see, you get to see where I went with this. So, looks a little dark. Let me get my light on here. All right. For this couch, I already painted her sister. I painted her sister. I did the water down method. I sanded it in between coats. And then I sold it. Was she soft? Yes, she was, except in the places I forgot to sand, but I did those after. Sand in between coats, water down your paint, you're good to go. It can be a little splotchy. Dye can be a little splotchy. That's why I don't like dye. I don't like it because it's toxic. I don't like it because it's messy, and I don't like it because it's splotchy. That's my experience. You have your own. So with this, I hear it want to show you. I was going. I wasn't going for that look. I was going for something else. Nobody believes me, but I was going for something else. I wanted this to feel like leather, okay? Or like pleather. Okay, so here we go. And it totally worked. I'm so excited. Here we go. Can y'all see that? Okay, it's, this has a race pattern. I wanted to have the race pattern. That's why I was doing this test, okay? So it's smooth. It's not sharp. Um, it's not going to be as soft as the original couch. Do I recommend you do this technique 
on your comfy, plush, velvet, family, movie, watching, cuddle, eat popcorn couch? Maybe not. Do I recommend this for um, the couch that's in the entryway where you put on your shoes or the couch that looks good but nobody sits in or maybe on your porch or, or, or you can have it in your living room. It's not uncomfortable, but it's not as cushy as it once was. But I'm not talking about painting a couch that's perfectly good. I'm talking about painting a couch that's had better days, but you like the shape of it and you don't want to get rid of it. You feel me? Okay, so what I've done here, and when I pour it on straight on paint, I meant to. That's what this does. So let's see, can you all see the reflection there? So it's got a bit of a reflection. Feel free to ask questions. Does it crack? No. Does it come off on your clothes? Oh, I've got paint, you can't really tell. You're not gonna believe me because I'll do it with white later. No. When paint dries, it cures. It's not gonna come off on your clothes anymore. So this is for me because I wanted it to have a leather feel. Now, during the reels, I got some feedback from people saying, add in fabric softener. I wanna tell you, I tried that last time. Sorry for the bar. I tried that last time. I didn't have much success with it and it didn't help it stay soft in my experience. Maybe it was the wrong fabric softener. Who knows, it just didn't do anything for me. I Googled it, I read up on it, and fabric softener really does not have any long-term effects when you add it to your paint from my vast Google knowledge. Y'all can look for your own Google articles, that's what I found. But somebody did say, Sue, use um, a fabric medium. So that's what I did. I didn't use a fabric, I Googled fabric mediums. I found one by Liquitex. The jar was this big. It was $11, okay. Y'all, I'm here to help you save money. The whole point is to help you save money. The whole point is to, is to do things with what you have in the house that's gonna help. Let me see if I missed a comment. Um, you didn't like the smell of the fabric softener? Yeah, I, <laughs> hey nature. Oh, good to see you, sweetie. Oh, it's been a while. I hope I see you in Maine. Um, I didn't find that it worked. If you think it works, go for it, but, one person said, sorry, the fabric softener. One person said, use Liquitex fabric medium. I love Liquitex products. I use them all the time. I went and looked at it. It's too expensive. So I did a deeper dive down the Google deep, dark rabbit hole. And I figured out how to make your own, okay, fabric medium. The reel that you guys saw where I said, I figured out how to make it soft. That's what I figured out. Let me show you what we did. Okay, no gatekeeping here. See, it's fine. I'll show you the colors in a second too. You'll be there, woo! I'm teaching in Maine, y'all. For those of you who don't know, I'm going on tour. I'm starting in Texas. Uh, I'm going to Texas, uh, Oklahoma, Baltimore, and Maine so far. That's where I've been invited. That's where I've been booked. But y'all, the possibilities are endless. You want me to come? You want me to come to Michigan? I'll come to Michigan. You want me to come to California? I'll come to California. Okay. So. How do you make a fabric medium? This is what I learned. Vinegar, okay, vinegar, and um, glycerin. I put it together, vinegar and glycerin, one to one. And then that mixture I mixed with water, one to one. Then I mixed that mixture with paint, one to one. Did y'all follow that? It'll be in the blog, like I just said. That helped the paint stay softer. But I know I'm throwing a lot at you guys. Like I said, if you're just joining me, I'm going out of town. I don't want to leave you guys hanging. I love a cliffhanger, but I, I'm not here to do that to you. I want you guys to, to just have all the information before I leave you alone with your paint, okay? You want any disasters coming back on me? Um, that mixture mixed with the paint did soften the paint. And I think that if we use that mixture with Miss Lillian's, if you are doing the watercolor effect on the sofa, as I did with the green sofa, I think that will help. You still need to sand it between layers. But I think mixing that definitely did make it a little softer and bendier. That's me, that was my experience. It may or may not be yours, but I'm gonna recommend making your own fabric texture medium 
mixing it with Miss Lillian's for that way of doing fabric. Now, did that help me with this? No, not really, because I'm going for the full strength uh, effect of the full paint on this, okay? So I noted it, I noticed that it worked, and then I put that aside to put in the blog for later. But I do wanna tell you that that's what I learned. And if you're going for a watercolor effect, or um, more of a sheer effect, if you want the paisley effect to come through, then I do recommend that. And like I said, all of this will be in the blog. It'll all be written down. You don't need to be scribbling furiously right now. Um, and I'll probably take this video and link it to the blog as well. And I welcome you guys. So I've been talking, oh my God, I've been talking a lot. Hi, you guys, I'm Tango Sue. Do you guys have any questions so far? Yes, I'm going on tour. It's Tango Sue Troublemaker Tour. Uh, I'm gonna be teaming up with my favorite furniture painters across the country. Basically, it's not set yet. I don't have every month set. I don't have every destination set. If people wanna team up with me and invite me, um, yeah, then you're on the tour. I'll put your little avatar on our little, uh, on our little bus. Hey, Abby, hey, Poppy. Uh, where can I find a link to your blog? Excellent question. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh, I like that, I like that. Um, always in my link in bio. I just, I'll give you another little hint. Uh, artists don't say link in bio, creators don't say link in bio because uh, social media norms uh, suppress our views when we send you off of the platform. So we'll always say like, it's there, it's there. So if you go to my uh, about section on Facebook, on TikTok, on Instagram, on Pinterest, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, all of them, you'll see a link to stan.store slash Tanglewood Sue. Okay, that tell, I keep that updated regularly because that has what's happening right now. The classes are on there. The links to whatever I'm featuring is on there. Everything's there. Um, if you wanna go jump straight to my website, it's just tanglewoodworks.com. Uh, and it's all there, it's all there for you. I actually did delete my tanglewoodsue.com blog Still there, but I decided to move it all back over to my original. I decided a blog, but I'm not a blogger, if you get my drift. Uh, so I moved it all back in one place. So there wasn't a, a shop and then a blog. It's all, it's all back together again. Everybody's back together. Um, hey, Krista. Um, all right, so if, so as I'm moving forward now, so I explained how to do the other way of painting, diluting, the glycerin, all of that. As I'm moving forward right now, I wanna show you guys what I'm doing specifically on this couch. Are we all good? Any questions before I switch gears? Hi, Mary, nice to see you. I'm heading out to Albuquerque tomorrow uh, to visit with my mom. I'm taking my daughter who's turning 18 and I'm getting her um, a new tattoo for her 18th birthday. I love her hair color. Did you mean me? <laughs> Y'all go check out, go check out the reel that went crazy. It's funny. I mean, just laugh with me. You gotta laugh with me. Some of the things that people are saying, it's it's it, it's painful, it's mean, but it at the end of the day, it's kind of funny. Hey Chris, how are you, darling? Okay, so I think we're good to go. So on this piece, let me let me. And I'm gonna do a little demo. I'm gonna do a little demo. And I definitely checked with Miss Lillian's about this, Marilyn. Um, yes, Jackie, you're so sweet. Yes, she got into St. John's. Uh, she's gonna be, so she's gonna be going to Albuquerque uh, next fall. I'm so excited for her. I will be crying. Well, she's making it easy on me because she's basically moving out um, in a couple weeks to go work at a ski resort. So, so um, I thought I had another year until I was an empty nester, but no, I have another week, I have another week. So y'all can play with me, please, please invite me to your town. I'm gonna need things to do next year. <laughs> oh, I don't listen to them, Ashley. You're so adorable. I don't listen to them. I mean, I am human. I am human. You can hurt my feelings, but no, I got way too much love. And I'm so, y'all, y'all, I've been doing Facebook for over 10 years. And I was like, it, 43,000, now we're at 53. <laughs> Taking the win. Taking the win. Taking the win. Did y'all see my new tattoo? Okay, I know I will be empty next. Okay, so let's talk about this. I don't wanna make it too complicated for you guys, but basically, 
What you can do if you want the leather effect is just use full strength paint. I tried using the glycerin, but the problem with that, if you have a raised edge like this chenille pattern, is that it just took a lot of coats because the glycerin watered down the paint instead of using water, right? So um, I was just it, just, it just took too much time. So I called up Marilyn, I'm like, hey, Marilyn, uh, I just wanna make sure I'm doing this right because she's done it a million times. She's like, yeah, just full strength paint. That's all you need to do, full strength paint. So then you see me pouring the paint. That's what I did. So let's go over that a little bit, what you need to do. Let me show you the difference. Oh, let me show you the, um, oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I don't try to be color coordinated. I just, um, it just keeps happening more and more. I'm becoming, becoming that woman. It's okay, it's okay. All right, so let me tell you the colors that we used here. We started with Smooth Jazz. I used Smooth Jazz, which was the light purple, because I just wanted to use it up because I didn't like that color. I'm sorry, don't hate me. I didn't like that color that much. It was just too pa pastel for me. But then when I put it on the sofa, it was kind of gorgeous. I have to admit that. So I highly recommend it. It was so much prettier than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just not a pastel person. Um, but then I wanted to use Chloe, uh, no, not Chloe, Crown Jewel. Okay, so this is the color I had intended. Crown Jewel, all right? So the middle of this is Crown Jewel. But then, oh, if you know me at all, you know I can't do one color. So I started playing with Raspberry Sorbet. You all can get these all from the link in my bio. Uh, just go to my bio or go to tangwoodworks.com. I'll link it after this. This is Raspberry Sorbet. And I really like that paint. I thought it was gonna do, be too pink, but it was actually really purpley pink. And then, when I mix colors, I like to mix one, let me, let me see if I can say this right, one hue, and I like to go warm to cool. So this is cool pink, raspberry sorbet is cool pink, um, but kiss kiss is orange pink. And I love the way they kind of clash, so that's what I did. That's what I did, and now we have this leather effect. So, and if y'all think I'm done, <laughs> you don't know me, you don't know me. Okay, what if you spray with the glycerin vinegar mix directly onto the fabric first? Um, I don't know what that'll accomplish. I'm being honest, I'm thinking, thinking on the spot. Executive function operate. Um, I don't know what that'll accomplish uh, because the problem really isn't the fabric, it's the paint. Let me get to the next step and then I'll show you why. So, if you're doing this way, you can't give up, my friends. You can't give up in the middle. If you give up in the middle, you're gonna be yelling at me, you're gonna be commenting and, and, and just saying it didn't work, it didn't work, it didn't work. You've gotta go, gotta go through. You gotta go all the way through, you gotta trust the process. And the process is, if you apply enough coats and sand properly, you will end up, let me flip the camera, you will end up with a leather feel, okay? I'm sitting on it, so there you go. See that? It's smooth. Is it as bendy, like super soft as that? No, it's not, I never promised that. But it is smooth, it's not crackly, and it's not gonna peel, and it's not gonna come off on your clothing. And then dip in the paint, it makes the wood soft and not brittle. Julian, I think I remember your comment about that. Um, you know, here's what I say about absolutely everything. Just test it. We're all still learning. We're all still learning, and I'm still learning from you guys, and you guys are still learning from me. And I would say if somebody wants to give that a shot, then definitely do that. I wanted a leather base because I am going to... I use my new super shifters on this couch. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. Okay, bam, shh, okay. All right, so, um, now, if you have not gotten enough of a thickness to kind of hit back all these little edges, this is, this is where you're gonna end up. This is not done. This is not done, okay? So this is sanded. It's smooth, but you see that? It, see how it's not reflective yet? 
I'm not at leather mode yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint this in just a second. I'm not there. I'm not there. Now, and over here, it's even worse, okay? Because I haven't finished this. This is why I wanted to jump on here and show you guys. See that? That's rough. Yeah, it feels like shit, okay? I'm not done. I'm not done. So if you stop here, you will hate me. You will hate your couch. Um, and that's why I'm doing this live, to say don't stop here. You have to do enough coats, okay? Um, so... Actually, you said that shit. <laughs> I thought you said that shit. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I've gotten so many nasty comments. It's just not beyond the realm of possibility. Um, so this is really rough, and especially right here, like around the edge, okay? So yeah, that's really rough. So is that making sense? Devlin, that's a fantastic question. And I don't know, I will try to keep track. Uh, but see, I experimented so many different ways on this that I used up more paint than I needed to. I used up more paint than I needed to. So I, I will do my best to estimate that when I'm all done for the blog. But you, you will need a lot, and that's why I used leftover paint first. If you have colors, basically what you need to do is kind of get that color seeped into the chenille, um, soaked in. And then the next layers will start to rest on top and rest on top. And then you're kind of creating your, your pleather feel. But getting it soaked in enough um, takes a fair amount of paint. Now, I have been experimenting on a way around that. But I just don't want to throw too much at you guys this second. Um, but I will tell you what I'm doing that is helping me stretch the paint out a little bit more. Okay, but it's not for the squishy parts of the sofa. It's only for the parts that are to be seen and not sat on because it's, it's not as comfortable, uh, but I think it's gonna stretch the paint even more. I'll show you that. Um, paint types, yes, my darling. So let me show you real quick and then I'm gonna tilt this over and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what I do in between coats. So for painting upholstery, I only use one brand and that's Miss Lillian's. That's the brand I sell. I've used many, I've used many. Uh, and this one has a built-in top coat and has the qualities I want for painting fabric. Uh, no, no shade to any other paint brands out there. Um, they all work in their own way. This is my favorite way and the only way I have been able to create this effect. Hey, thank you guys for sharing this and everything. Um, I really appreciate that. So let me see if I can tilt this over without injuring myself live. Um, oh, thank you. All right, keep asking questions. If I don't answer your question live, tag me and I'll go back and answer your question while I'm on the plane tomorrow. What if you put wax paper in between the cushion and the fabric? Unzip it so the part isn't soaking into the cushion. I don't think I'm putting enough on. That's a very good question. I didn't wet the fabric first. I'm not... I don't think I went all the way through. I'm trying to get into, but not all the way through. So, but yeah, that's a good idea, but you can't do that on your whole piece because you won't be able to do that here. People are like, you need to wet it, you need to wet it, you need to wet it. Yeah, you can, but when you wet it, you're wicking it. So when you wet the fabric, you're wicking the paint as deep as you're wetting it. So that's why I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't do that this time. So, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's totally an idea. Um, yeah, let's see here. Let me just open this up a little bit. Yeah, okay. See, when you're on with me live, I'm gonna answer your question live. I'm gonna go in here. Yeah, it's not even all the way through. So I hope that answers for people who are like, what about it getting mildewy or moldy or any of that? It, not on this, it's, it's not gonna go that far. I want to be your assistant. Do you live in Maryland? <laughs> Girl, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> it's fun, but it's insane on here. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'm gonna do. Is this is this answering your questions, you guys? Am I hitting am I hitting some of those questions that you had? I certainly hope so. I know I'm going. Fast. I'm not really in a hurry. I just, um, I'm mostly in a hurry to make sure I keep your attention span. No offense. No offense. But we all know 
They're short. So am I. Y'all, if you don't grab me in the first half a second in your video, I'm out of there. So um, I, I, no shame. No shame. Hey, Kelsey. Hey, Margie. All right. I'm going to tilt this back because in general, this process is easier if the paint is working with gravity. Okay? So, please don't let me hurt myself. Please don't let me hurt myself. Please don't let me hurt myself. Okay. We did it. All right. So. Let's see here. All right. It's going to get loud for a second. Now. So this part, well, actually, this is the zipper. Hold on, let's flip around. That's the zipper, so it won't even matter. We don't need to worry about that so much. And here's, here's the smooth gas, and it is smooth. Oh, let me show you that. Okay. This was a test, okay? And it's nice and soft, and it's smooth, but it's not leather-like yet, because I haven't put on enough coats. But if, but if you're not going for the leather effect, this worked. It worked really well. Okay, so let me flip this around. Oh, we're almost there on this side too. Um, so the way I work, I make the reels, I show you as I go, we have some fun, and then I post them all kind of in real time. For those of you just joining, I'm going out of town. That's why I'm doing this live for you, so I don't leave you at a cliffhanger. Uh, and then I string them all together, and I also shoot a lot of footage in between that is not real worthy, that is worth me explaining in depth what I'm doing. Um, but nobody's going to watch that in a, a one-minute short. I know that. Um, it is. It's like vinyl. That's really good. Yes, it's like vinyl. Exactly. Okay, so I have put probably three coats right here. This does not feel good to the touch right now. Um, so here's what I do. You can either, one, get a, where did I put it? If y'all are new to my lives, this is normal. Tank with Sue running around trying to find out what she's got is normal. Okay. Use sandy block, okay? Two different shoes. Yes, I broke my toe. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to drop it on myself. This is my uh, my boot. And I was late to my appointment to get it checked because I put in the wrong address in my navigator and I missed my appointment. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to get wearing this boot until I get another appointment. Ah! So anyway, okay, so when you've got, at between every coat of paint, you can't forget this if you're doing this with a raised pattern. Paisley, chenille, anything with a raised pattern. Anything where the fibers stick up, okay? You gotta sand it back. It's quite satisfying because as you sand it, you're gonna get it really smooth. If you are like me, and somewhat lazy, perhaps, you did? I stubbed my toe on the pool. That tells you how long this has been broken. It's December. It still hurts like a mother. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Okay, get out your sander, baby. You're not gonna hurt nothing. You're not gonna hurt, you can hurt yourself. Be careful, I do still have a scar from this. Just be careful, don't do nothing stupid. Um, but stand back. <laughs> This is now super smooth. It's not cutting me. I'm not saying ow, okay? It feels really smooth, but it has not achieved pleatherness. It has not achieved a pleather-like feel. And that's what I want. Hold on, I'll hit one more spot. <laughs> It will not hurt 
anybody. It will not make you bleed. It will not make you itch. But it is also not quite sealed in tight. Yeah, definitely do that. Get you a sander. Um, I injured myself because I did not give a sander the respect that it deserves. And that's why I use a palm sander now, not an orbital sander. Because a palm sander, I just, in my head, I feel like I can't injure myself quite as badly as I did with the orbital sander. But I'm okay. That was years ago and I learned my lesson. Okay, so now, we talked about uh, the glycerin mixture. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that because I want my paint thick. I want it thick right now, okay? So I'm just going to use the raspberry sorbet. And I know it seems like I was being dramatically um, dramatic. That was, that was just excellent, wasn't it? Like I was trying to like do some kind of clickbait with my video, but I wasn't. I mean, it did work out that way. I mean, let's face it, that worked out great, you guys. Uh, but um, I really was just pouring the paint on um, because I really am just pouring the paint on. This is just this is just the paint, nothing in it, okay? So now, I'm gonna pour it on. Y'all wanna get a little closer to me? Y'all wanna get closer? Can you see okay? Let me tilt it down. All right, I'm putting my paint down at my left foot. If you saw my last video, you know that I am prone to completely destroy that. Okay, um, don't leave. I'm gonna do this, but I got one more trick I'm gonna show you before I leave to go on vacation. I'll be back in a week and we'll finish the whole couch and then we'll add the super shifters to it. It's gonna be just phenomenal. I don't know what it's gonna look like. I don't know what the pattern is gonna be. I figure that out as I go, but it's gonna be awesome. So now I don't want it to run over here. So I'm not gonna put quite as much as I normally do, but I'm just, I want it thick. You can put it in a bowl if you want to, but I know I want this really thick. So why, why make a bowl that I have to clean up? Why? Okay. For these, I love my shorty bristles. As I fell off. <laughs> oh, you're adorable. For those of you who can't see the comments because you're watching on another platform. Yes, I am here. I am ADHD and I am here for the dopamine hits. I am here for you. Um, okay, do you see how that is still leaving me little Ah, what, what's the word I want to say? Like bubbles almost. Like I can tell that I'm still not quite there yet. This takes a lot of paint. I'm not going to lie. Y'all, I didn't say it didn't. I just mean that. All right, so here it's getting much thicker. So I'm just going to spread this out. You want it like thicker than you would ever dare put on wood furniture. If you do this on wood furniture, it's going to dry. Um thick and probably peel off. But I mean, that's what's so fun about this, you guys. Haven't you ever wanted to just pour the paint on your painted furniture because you're so tired of all the coats of paint that it takes? Like this, this is fun. Um, I'm just letting it soak all the way in there and being extremely heavy handed, extremely heavy handed. All right, so I may even put on a little bit more right now. It doesn't matter, thicker, the thicker, the better. Say it with me, women. The thicker, the better. Yes. All right. Finally. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on a little bit more, and then I'm gonna, if y'all want me to, if you've got, if you're with me, I've got one more trick I wanna show you. And then I feel like I can safely leave you guys who are not gonna wait for me to finish this couch before you get started. I know you. I know that most of my followers are ADHD like me. And that's why I did not feel okay leaving you guys without all these answers. Cause <clears throat> I did not wanna have to come back home fielding a bunch of, <coughs> <coughs> oh my God, Sue, I screwed it up. Okay, you have no excuse now. I'm telling you everything I know. All right, here we go. So that's nice. And thick, I want it to look really glossy, okay? And this, no, this does not require top coat. 
If you wanted to just be done after this, I mean, this is a few layers, you're done. You don't need to put on the wax. I'm gonna be waxing it because I'm gonna turn this into a magical, glistening, color shifting work of art. Um, thank you, sweetie. Okay, we want to see you blend this with, with the other color, Chris. Okay, um, I, I made a reel of me doing that. I made, I'll, I'll be posting it the next couple of days. I won't do that now because I kind of want this all to be one color, I think, I forget. I forget what color I'm doing. Yes, for right now I want this all one color, uh, but I did film a lot of me blending on the top, so I will satisfy that for you. And when I get back, we'll do some more lives of me blending the rest of it. Okay. Who wants to know one more trick today? Who has the who has the attention span for one more trick? And I, I might do that, Chris. I might do that too. Because I'm, I'm willing to show you. Um, we still got a lot of people on here. Um, it's one more thing that was not advised. That was not advised. <laughs> It's not advice. Okay, just just so that she does not get blamed, Marilyn told me, Miss Lillian, the owner of Miss Lillian, who is amazing, um, she said, don't do that. <laughs> she said, don't do that. The thing I'm about to show you, she said, don't do that. No, let me explain why I'm gonna do that. Let me explain, there's a method to madness. Okay, this took a lot of paint, not gonna lie. My goal is to save y'all money. So I'm like adding up how many coats of paint. Now, is it as much as it would be to have it reupholstered? Absolutely freaking lutely not. Is it, um, is it as much as it would be to buy a new couch? Uh, depends on where you get your couch, but probably not. Would it, is it gonna probably cost a, um, I don't know, no, 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 no. Uh, maybe $200, maybe $100, I don't know, of paint? Yeah, probably for a huge couch. You know, start on a chair. Um, so I was trying to come up with ways to thicken it, but keep it bendy. Here's what I came up with. Here's what I came up with. <laughs> Y'all are gonna laugh at me. You're gonna laugh at me. The Mod Punch. I mean, y'all. <gasps> what can't we do with Mod Punch? What freaking can't we do with Mod Punch? Okay, so. Before y'all jump in here, I know Mod Podge doesn't dry as bendy as paint, okay? That's why I'm using it right here. I'm not gonna use it where the curvature of the piece wants it to bend. I'm using this to stretch the paint and thicken it while still keeping it somewhat pleatherly. Did y'all follow that? So what I did, let me do, I'm going to show you the test. Um, and for those of you who are like, oh, she just totally wings it. Not exactly. I mean, kind of. Well, somewhere in the middle. I have a book of um, upholstery samples. So what I do is I tear out the pages of the, uh, I got it from um, the decorating store down the street. They're getting rid of upholstery samples. So I got them so that I can practice on fabric that is similar to this fabric. So this was a chenille fabric. So I tried lots of different things. This is, this is the paint mixed with Mod Podge. So it stays shiny. I can sand it. I did a test on the back, but it's, it's harder and it will crack a bit. Okay, it will. So I'm not recommending, say it with me, do not mix Mod Podge in your piece for your entire chair. Don't do it. But on the places that are not going to naturally bend or need to stay soft, this, this, it kind of helped. It kind of helped. Okay, so because I did this test, see, I was just so maligned on that reel because everybody thinks I don't test everything. I test, I test it. See how you can see the white poking through because it did bend? I don't know how this is going to age over time. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna wet it down, okay? And we're gonna do the method of kind of watercoloring it just to stain it. That's all we're doing. Y'all with me? Y'all with me? So I'm using the glycerin amount. Um, but that's only because I want to stain it first. So, I know, y'all are gonna need like cliff notes for this because I threw so much at you. But 
Y'all are smart. You got it. So here's what I'm going to do. This, this is your demo if you're going to do the, um, the paint uh, layering dyeing approach. So here's your demo. So I'm going to put this in. I'm not going to measure. I'm going to put some in. That's all I'm going to tell you. Like some. I don't know. Okay. Then this is my mixture. This is the glycerin, the vinegar, and the water. I'm going to shake it up over here. I'm going to water this down. So instead of watering down the paint, I'm using this mixture instead. Okay? I like to put them in my FIFA bottles. Just be careful. Make sure that they are um, sealed tight. If this thing gets clogged, it'll come out the side and you'll ruin your clothes. Now, for this. So don't be coming in at the end of the video right now. If you're just jumping in, you got to go watch from the beginning. I need y'all to sign a waiver. I need y'all to sign a waiver. <laughs> Seen it. All right, let me go down here. And then I gotta go pack. Okay, so I'm gonna do this way to start because I wanna get the dye on there. So if you've learned nothing, except that I'm a little bit touched, if you've learned nothing, Learn that there are so many ways to do so many things, okay, you guys? Let's not judge people for how they do it. I mean, if you're at their house and their couch feels like shit, I mean, yeah, you might be like, hey, maybe you should have watched Tangled with Sue and learned how to do this better. But, you know, even that probably isn't nice. <sighs> you save... Uh, yes, I will most likely keep it there. This is kind of a special gift because, um, so we'll see. We'll see if it stays there or not. It'll definitely be in my blog and it'll definitely be added to whatever course I do. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm just pouring this on here. Woo, let's go fast, let's go fast. Oh, y'all can't see. I didn't tilt it enough. Hold on. That's no fun. Okay, there we go. All right, so this I am gonna just work in and spread out. Okay, you can add more water. I added some water. You get some down and you can get some down and mush it around, okay? Because this, at this point, I just wanna kind of dye it. I could even have added more glycerin. Even that was a little bit, um, was a little bit thick. I probably could have done that a lot thinner, okay? But basically, keep wetting it. I go right over the nails because I'm gonna hit those up with wax when I'm done anyway, so I don't care about them. Okay. So, if you are doing this, if you're painting your couch this way, instead of the leather way, dilute it a little more than I did, but you can, you can keep diluting it just by spritzing it with water and pushing it out. Okay and then sand it between layers, and you'll get it soft. It'll be awesome. And I think that using the glycerin actually really did help. Let me do that again with a little bit more of the glycerin mixture in there, just for um, demonstration. Because you want it really, uh, you do want to build this up in layers. Does that make sense? Oh, I know. I love the shorties for this because you can really press it in. You can really press in. Okay, so I'm going to wet that down. I am known for giving way too much information, throwing a lot of things at you, um, but I'm also known for answering as many questions as I possibly can. So... I'm aware that I've kind of taught you three different ways on this live, but I want to cover all my bases, whatever you guys want to learn how to do. So I've watered that down a little bit more with the glycerin mixture. I'm just going to pour it on here. You can dip it into a, you can dip it in and brush it on. I'm just, I'm just lazy and I, I like to pour. There we go. Y'all can do however you want. There we go. Okay. That's spreading out a lot better. Okay. 
Um, the only other thing I will answer is why not just dye it? Well, do you see how I'm able to move this around with the water while it's still wet and like press it in and where it's a little heavy, put it in a little water and press it out and press it in and move it around and do all that? I, dye doesn't work that way. In my experience, you know, once you put it in there, it's in there. So, A, I don't want to deal with the toxicness of dye. And I just don't feel like it's going to um, move with me as well as I need it to. But this is pretty good. I mean, I'm able to get this not too splotchy on the first go round. Okay. Let me push that out there. I got a little heavy handed there. And you'd probably have better luck with it being, um, with its spreadability if you didn't do it my way. Let me show you a normal way. So if you put it, if you do it this way, like a sane person would do it, you can kind of spread it out better that way. So just always got a flair for the drama. And then you can just let it kind of sink in there. Okay. And if it still feels too heavy, if you're like, Sue, I want it lighter, you just wanted a watercolor effect, keep just adding more of your glycerin mixture or water, either one. So you can just add some more. I'm gonna make it really watered down. And y'all, this, this is a perfectly decent way to have painted your couch. I think that's what a lot of people were trying to tell me not so nicely um, in the comment section um, but I know that already this is another way and this is a legit way and this is an awesome way and this is maybe even an easier way because once you do this you might be done in one coat kiddos depending on the color you choose look how look how evenly um, dispersed that is and that looks dang that is good Dang, Daniel, this looks good. So I'm just gonna keep going. Get it even, even, even. So if this were if this were the effect that I was going for, I would just let it dry, sand it, probably do it again in wherever it looks splotchy. But I'm going for pleather. So what I'm gonna do instead is let this dry and then paint it with a 50-50 mixture, okay? of Mod Podge and paint on top of it because that is going to get me to the leather effect super fast instead of multiple coats of paint. I'll keep you posted on how that goes, but I need to let this dry first, but I feel like that was a better tutorial to give you guys. All right, questions. Questions, let me have them right now. Gotta go pack. I'll keep painting. Um, hey, Melanie, hey, Paula, hey, Elizabeth. So glad you guys jumped on, and I really appreciate you guys jumping on when I gave you absolutely no notice that I was coming on. I didn't know I was going to do this until this morning when I saw 800 more comments, and I was like, okay, I can't answer all these. I'm going to get the underside here. I'm just going to jump on here and do a live and answer them all at once. And the way I see it, kiddos, and if you have this on your social media too, you don't need to answer the people who aren't listening, Okay. Let me say it one more time for emphasis. You don't have to answer people who are not listening. Those of you who are on this live, those of you who are going to see this are the people who decided to follow me because you, you could tell that either this was going to be kind of fun or you're going to get to laugh at me or have fun with me or learn something with me. And I thank you very much for um, giving me that honor. Uh, there are going to be people who just want to make fun of you and just tear you down. Um, and they don't want to know that you know what you're doing or that you're right. They just want to be mean. So just don't take that on. Don't take it on. That's why I wanted to do a live. I'm going to answer the people who are listening. What, what grit did you use when sanding? Is it going to be soft to the touch? Yes, it is. Um, that's a good question. Hold on. Let me look. Um, medium grit. I know that's annoyingly vague, but when I used, um, if you look at the reel where I go, ow, that hurt, I'm going to show you that I use three different things. So 
This one is medium grit. The hard grit, the really heavy grit, I'm sorry, I don't know my grit numbers, um, just kind of flaked off. It was too rough, so it was like really rough against really rough. This medium grit really worked. Sometimes um, I will use the, um, if you're doing the leather, you need to have a, a medium grit. If you're doing this, this chenille with just the watercolor, a medium grit block, or even one of these works great. Okay, the red um, sanding sponges, like scrubber sponges, because when you're doing it this way, the watercolor way, it doesn't get as tough. So you can knock back those edges really easily. When you're doing it the other way, the leather way, or the pleather way, the, t the pink is really tough. You really need to kick it back uh, because you've got paint around those bristles that's drying and you need to like, it's just like you're, you have to knock them back harder. So this one, probably any sandpaper will work. I think that um probably 120, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Susan, hey girl. So let me clarify that. I'm only using the Mod Podge in the paint. And I, maybe I shouldn't have even told you guys this, but I, I'm gonna trust you with this knowledge. I'm only using that in the places where it's flat and it doesn't need to be comfortable and it's not gonna bend, okay? Because if you mix the Mod Podge with the paint, it will be harder and it, it may crack, okay? I'm only doing that like right here where it's not going to bend or get a lot of use except for the back of your thighs and the back of the couch, which nobody should be sitting on, okay? For the rest of the couch, I'm not going to use it. I was only testing to see if it would help you stretch your paint a little more. So if you have any part of your furniture that you're like, oh, I don't want that to crack or bend, don't do the Mod Podge. I'm only doing that in like, like the whole back of the couch. I don't want to use like four pints of paint back there or four quarts of paint. I just want to spread it out. I'll show you I'll show you what I did on the back in two coats of paint. Did that make sense? I feel like I've I've given you a dangerous I've given you a dangerous recipe and I don't want you to abuse it. Hey Kelly, um head on back to the beginning of the video. Um uh, and I, I answer it all. It'll all also be in the blog, okay? But just to recap for those of you who just joined us, it's um, glycerin and vinegar, one-to-one. -one. And then when those two are together, those two are together, and then that's one-to-one -one with water. Okay, so these two, and then that, bam, that's my math. And then that's all one now, and then one with the pain. Does that make sense? That's my math. Yeah, water, vinegar, and glycerin. And I think it worked. I think it worked great. I have not compared it to um, a fabric medium, but Google told me, and you know, when is Google wrong? That um, this would work. And I'm not gonna spend $300 on the couch, okay? Cause now we're getting up to, I don't know about that. Uh, so I, if I couldn't find a way to do it DIY style, I didn't wanna do it. Okay, okay, good Susan. I'm like, Susan, be careful. Be careful with knowledge. <laughs> um, but this is looking really good right now. Um, and you guys, this looks here, I'll flip it around so you can see. And what's also cool is when you do the watercolor effect, you don't have to have it all look the same color. You can have it lighter and darker. Absolutely, this is exactly how I did this sister couch with the blue paint. I used, um, what did I use? Oh, I'm blanking on which one I used for that. Um, but yeah, this way works perfectly well. Perfectly well. Um, all right, I'm gonna tilt it up and I'm gonna show you the back that I started with so that you guys can see how it worked with the Mod Podge uh, trick. All right, let's see here. And you know, this couch was pretty dingy, kiddos. Pretty dingy. So, this is, I get my hand over here. And it was white. Um, so I could do any color I wanted. If you're doing the leather effect, you can basically do that on any color couch and make whatever color you want. Because you're using so many coats of paint, you're gonna cover whatever the original color was, it's never coming through again. Is it easier over white? Sure. 
Uh, but if you're doing the multi coats, you can change any color you want. Uh, if you want to make a white couch from black couch, you're going to be at this a while. I'm not saying it's not doable, but you're going to be at it a while. Okay? Now you can kind of see how that's looking. You know, that looks good. I gotta say, that looks kind of good. Okay, look at it all together. Okay. So y'all can see the fun that you can have just doing it that way. All right. Okay, so this is straight paint. Nothing but straight paint on the top coat, okay? This is the paint and the glycerin, watercolored on. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you, back here. Okay. This, this is Mod Podge and the paint, two coats. The one on the seat was like six coats. Do you see what I'm saying? This was only two. So I was able to thicken it and have it like, seal in tight and stand it. It's very smooth, it feels like leather, but if this could bend, it would probably crack, okay? That's your warning. It, but luckily this, what's on here? This can't bend, because it's the back of the sofa. Okay. Oh, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. All right, kiddos. This has been fun. Um, if you have, if you guys are watching this on replay, go ahead and ask your questions. If I don't answer your question, tag me, because I can't, I mean, y'all, I'm getting hundreds of comments an hour. So you're gonna have to tag me. Um, if you want a personalized console on something that you're doing, go to my stand store, I do offer that. Um, if you want a, a video response directly to you, answering your question, um, I can do that. I'll just, you ask the question, I make your video response. That's one price. If you want an hour long consultation with me about anything, furniture painting, furniture business, media, marketing, any of that, I am available. I do charge y'all. I'm a businesswoman. Uh, this is free. This is free, but I do charge for the personal consultations. Um, and I am hitting the road in January to go on the Troublemaker Tour. So um, please check that out. I'm making a separate event for every stop. Right now, we have already booked up, um, not booked up, we haven't sold all the tickets, but we're all set for Texas. Uh, we are planning Oklahoma. We are, I'm all set for Maine. I'll be with Daydream Apothecary. Um, I'll be, um, I'm their opening ceremony. Um, and then uh, we're just booking up and I'm also doing Baltimore again in uh, January. So that's it so far. If you want me to come anywhere in the country, I'm there. Okay. Oh, Julia, girl, that's what I'm here for. Y'all, I don't want you to be scared off of these things. This is fun. And even if you think you're screwing it up, I doubt you are. I really doubt you are. And you can always change course. You can always reach out to me. Um, I, well, like I say, I fail so you don't have to, except that I don't really see anything as a pure failure because if we did, we're gonna learn something. We're gonna learn something, just like on this. I learned how to do the glycerin because I did this and then somebody reached out to me and taught me something new that didn't help with the process I was doing, but totally helps with the next time I wanna do a watercolor couch. I mean, that's life, man. That's awesome. If you're paying attention and you're listening. Um, uh, thank you, Susan. I know I'm, we're going to try to get me uh, down under, girl. We're going to try to get me there, right? Um, Carrie, you want me to come to Iowa? Find a furniture painting store near you in Iowa. That's what you got to do. Um, the way that it works is a symbiotic relationship because I go to a furniture painting store. They sell the paint. I come in. I teach their people. Their fans, my fans, TikTok, everybody who's in that area, how to use the paint. They, they sell more paint because now their people know how to use it in different ways. I get to meet new people, okay? It's a win-win. It's a win-win. Um, and it's cost-effective that way. So nobody loses money. Everybody, everybody puts it in and everybody passes it forward. That's why I only do it at furniture painting shops. But if you just have a booth and you still want to host me because you want to sell more of your paint and teach your people how to use it, um, and I also am teaching media production, um, 
then uh, uh, that's a win too. So just just DM me and we'll, we'll get you set up. Cool. Oh, I'm not going, well, I wish I was going to Austin. I'm going to Vidor, Texas. Um, but girl, if you can't make it there, um, hit me up on the next one. Hit me up on the next one. Um, anyway, thank you guys so, so, so much. Um, I'll check back in with you. Watch all the reels. They're really, they're funny. Just enjoy them. Please go on to the ones that are viral now that I've told everything to you and, um, you know, stick up for me. <laughs> if each one of you could just go on there and say something nice <laughs> on my behalf. Oh, I would be so grateful. It's hard to fight this battle all by myself. Um, yeah, yeah, down south. But, you know, if somebody else wants to book me in Texas in February, um, I can do two. But Texas is a pretty big state. So um, just hook me up. All right. Mwah. Love you guys. And welcome all you new folks who are joining us um, on the Tango with Sue show. I'm so happy to have you here. We're going we're gonna to learn a lot. and We're going to laugh a lot. I'm glad you're here. Bye, everybody.